Hey, Mark from Whole Latte Love. Today we're going to take a look at two Jura One Touch Super Automatic Espresso Machines. We got Gina behind the camera. Hi, Gina. Hi. Um, so what we have is the Jura Impressa Z7 and the Jura Impressa F8. Now you'll notice right off the bat the Z7 is just a whole lot larger, and this is kind of this is one of Jura's high capacity machines. Um, now, bean to cup, both bean to cup machines, so you're going to ground from fresh ground beans. So as we go in, we'll take a look at this bean hopper here. Um, come on, <laughs> there you go. Um, so a very, very large bean hopper here. You got a lot of capacity in there. Um, seals very nicely. Um, over here is the water tank. And this is very, very large as well. One of the largest we see on these machines. This is 96 ounces. Now you can take that like I have off and fill it at a sink or you can fill it uh, right here at the machine if you got like that hose. Um, both machines also come with a water filter. We highly suggest using one of these. Um, it'll increase the time between the scalings and also give you better tasting coffee. Now the, the uh, Z7 uh, is, is like I say a very large capacity machine and it also has very large capacities for things like a tall glass about six inches here so plenty of room if you like a tall latte and you can see what this machine also comes with a thermally insulated milk container so you can put milk in here for your uh, cappuccinos and lattes and macchiatos um, you can leave that out for quite a while the milk's going to stay cold um, so it has a dedicated espresso and milk spout here and we're going to make a we'll make a, uh, a like a latte macchiato here in a moment um, and it also has an adjustable control for the type of froth you get. So you can go all the way from no air in your milk uh, on up to a lot more air in your milk if you're, say, making a cappuccino. So that's adjustable. And the amounts are fully programmable. Moving over to the F8 over here, um, you'll notice this one has a nice color screen. I'm going to exit out of this little area here. We'll just save that high temperature for our espresso. Um, and we'll return and return and return. Oh, get out of programming. So you can see it comes with a four one touch drinks right on the main menu here. But what I like, if you have guests, you just start turning this dial and you get like these pretty pictures of your drinks. So it makes it really easy for like somebody who's not familiar maybe with milk based espresso drinks uh, to figure out what it is that they might want. And you can see all the options here. You have cappuccino, latte macchiato, macchiato. You can get just milk. Um, and ristrettos, which are very short espresso shots, espresso, a couple espresso, uh, and just regular coffee. Um, now, a little different here with the milk system, it does not come with a milk carafe. So you take this tube and you put it into a container of milk. I'm using just a frothing pitcher here, but you could use just a jug of milk. And it has the spouts kind of grouped together here, so you're going to get your milk and your espresso um, out of the spouts here. Um, so let's do a, uh, well, well, we'll program a cappuccino over here. So we're going to show you how uh, using a press and hold method, which is pretty common to these types of one-touch machines. So generally if you press and hold a button here, we're going to press and hold cappuccino. And you can see how the display has switched to ask me enough milk. So it's just going to dispense milk into my cup until I press that button again. And then it'll store that amount, then it'll do the espresso. You can see that it's got to heat up to a steaming temperature here. And then it's going to tell me to open this switch here, which is going to start the milk running. So there's our milk. Now the froth, unlike the Z7, the froth type is not adjustable on this machine at all. So if you kind of take a look, it's a nice, fine milk, milk froth there. Now once I've got the amount I want, all I do, just press the button. Oop. I'm sorry. Close the switch. We'll get that right. It's a lot of these machines. Now it's going to do the espresso, which had already ground. So here comes our espresso. And you can see the height of these spouts. Now you won't be able to fit a tall glass like you can on the Z7. So if you like tall lattes, the Z7 might be a better choice. And now to stop my espresso, I like it when that foam gets right just up over the edge. Now that amount will be programmed. So you can program the volumes very easily like that. Now you can also do the same thing using the menus in here. So we're going to get into the menu. So I'm going to press the uh, little programming button here. And you can see we have some different menus here. There's seven total menus. We're going to just go to the, sec or the third one here and go into expert mode. 
And I'm going to go to Cappuccino. And I'm going to program some parameters for that. So I can program the volume of uh, the coffee that we, that we uh, put in. Um, but you also have access to things like coffee strength here. So we've got four different strengths we can choose from. So we'll save, I want mine the strongest, so we'll save that. And as we go to the next one, we can program the temperature. So let's take a look at our temperature options here. So you have two temperature options on this machine for coffee. So we'll save that. And then for amount of milk, you can see it's done by time. And that's also pretty common. So what I just did, it just gave me 22 seconds of milk when I did that before. So it stored that amount. I could change it if I wanted just a little bit less or change it if I wanted more. So we'll save that. And then you can also add an interval. Now, not really appropriate for a cappuccino because you want all the same stuff here. But what, if you're doing a macchiato, you can do, so when it dispenses the milk, you can give it a time that you want to delay before it does the espresso. And what that'll do is allow the milk time to separate a little bit. So you can get that layered look where you get a layer of espresso in between two layers of milk. And that's, that's a pretty common thing on these machines. Um, so again, you have the spouts that are all together here. Um, you can, of course, do two espresso or two coffees at once. Um, we'll return here, and I'm just going to have it do two espresso while we're doing this. We'll get out of the programming mode here. If I want to do two espresso at any time, I'm going to put two under here. I'm going to just hit this button twice, and you see it says two espresso. Um, and I've already programmed these for 1.5 ounce each. So it's going to do those. You can do the same thing with, with the other coffee drinks as well. And uh, Jura machines, when they make two drinks, they have a very large brewing chamber. They can grind up to 16 grams of coffee at a time. So they do just one grinding cycle. Some other manufacturers will do a separate grinding cycle for each drink. So back over to the Impressa Z7 here. Um, again, you got a lot of adjustability in these spouts, so you can really do a, uh, a tall drink. Um, and why don't we have it do, we'll show how we do a latte macchiato here. So I'm going to do a press and hold, because I've never programmed one on here. I also like the little light that you see going into the cup there. And also, the difference on the Z7, you have adjustable uh, quality of your milk froth. So you can go from less frothy to more frothy. So to get some separation between my layers, I'm going to just actually do some of that. So right now, not very much air at all in the milk. And as we turn up, we're getting more and more air to a very frothy sort of milk. And you can see up here a different display. Um, it's got like a you know, dot matrix thing working here. But once I have enough milk, I'm just going to press the button. And it's going to stop. It'll store that amount of milk. And just like on the uh, F8 over here, I could, and you can see it's running its uh, delay that it already had programmed before it's going to do the espresso. And that's how it gets that separation between the layers. So now it's going to put my espresso in, and you can see how it's got those dedicated spouts again that are going to do that. Now up in the display, it's asking me if I have enough coffee. So it's, going to, it's dispensing the coffee or espresso here. And you can see how you get that mid-layer here, a very nice macchiato look to the drink. And again, I like, that. I like the foam to come right up over the edge so it looks really nice. And once I've got enough, press that button, and there's our drink. Absolutely beautiful. Now, just like on the F8 here on the Z7, you can go in, and we'll do that right now, and I'll show you how you could um, program some of those. So you just press and hold this rotary dial up here. And you get it, you access the other menus. I'm interested in the products menu, so I'll press that. I'll select our product, that macchiato. And you can see the drink I just made, and it stored these amounts, had two and a half ounces of espresso in it. Um, so here I can change the strength of it. And on this machine, you have five strength settings, whereas on the F8, you had four. I like mine extra strong, so we'll store that. And then we can move on to our temperature. And on this machine, we have three temperatures to choose from on the Z7. The F8 was two. I like it high temperature on for my espresso. And as we go through, what I did last time was it's, and it stored that amount and I programmed it 21, but I could seconds of milk, I could change that. 
And then there's that pause that it did, the 10 seconds that gave us the, uh, the time for the milk to separate out a little bit. And I also did a little separation just by adjusting the froth while we were doing that. Um, so let's take a look. We took a look at the capacities over here. Oh, also under here we have the bypass doser and the, uh, and the uh, control for your, your grind here. So you have six grind settings. When you're doing espresso, a little tip, you want a finer grind. If you're doing longer coffees, you want to turn it down to a uh, coarser grind. And you can also use the, uh, the roast level of your beans to determine your grind to some extent. Whereas you have lighter roasted beans, you'd grind finer. Darker roasted, you'd grind coarser. But also up here, you do have a bypass doser. So this you can use pre-ground coffee into. So later in the day, maybe you want to, you have some pre-ground decaf, you want to use that. That would go right into here. And you can make two, I believe, from there as well. Uh, moving over to the F8 here. Uh, smaller water tank here. It's at 64 ounces. Again, this machine will come with a filter as well, and we highly suggest using that. Our bean hopper up here is a little deceiving. It goes, it's very deep in here, so it holds quite a bit of coffee um, of your beans. And it also has the bypass doser right here that you can scoop uh, pre-ground into. And over on the other side, then you've got a little storage area. There's your scoop for your pre-ground and a nozzle if you just wanted to dispense water out of the machine that fits where the milk comes out. And the machine, these, the Jura machines automatically know. Watch, I'll open the bypass doser here, and it'll tell me to add the pre-ground coffee. I do like the color display here. When I close this, since I didn't put any in, it's going to say, uh, what are you thinking? There's not enough coffee in there. But that'll reset in just a moment. Um, so some, let's take a look. Now, again, we said the, uh, let's go back over the Z7 here, very, uh, very high capacity machine. So you pull this out, and it's got a very, very large box. That's our used coffee puck from brewing, and also a very large drip, drip tray. And the machine will let you know um, if you need to empty these. It'll tell you right in the display that stuff needs to be emptied. And if I get out of here, we can kind of demonstrate that if I exit this here. And exit this menu. And exit one more. You can reset it to factory defaults, by the way. You can change from uh, measuring in ounces to milliliters. You can change languages. Um, so it's so as it resets here, it's telling me I because I had opened the bypass doser on here, I don't have enough, and that'll reset in just a moment. So if I take the water tank out, you can see, kind of simulate that it's out of water there. It'll tell you that. Um, so the machines are very intelligent. They tell you what's going on. Um, you do have adjustable spouts on this one, so you can spread these out. If you have, you know, a couple of espresso cups are a little larger, and this one comes up and down. And you can also get water right, right here. So if you like, say, an Americano, which is like a shot of espresso, um, and then add some water over top, you can do that all right here. I like that. So that's the Jura Impressa Z7 and the Impressa F8. Again, the main differences, let's go over them one more time. Lots of capacity here on the Z7. You have the very high spout, so if you like those taller glasses, um, you can get those under there. You can also vary the froth. Um, over, and it has, you know, the, doesn't have the uh, nice color menu. Um, over on the F8, you get to select your drinks with the pretty pictures, which is so nice. Um, you cannot vary the froth. It does not come with the, uh, the milk, uh, the thermal milk container like you get over here, but you can, you can use it if you want one of those over there. You can pick that up optionally. So again, uh, that's the Z7 and the F8 from Jura. I'm Mark from Whole Latte Love. Thanks for watching. Hey, why not subscribe now for easy free access to more videos on everything coffee brought to you by wholelattelove.com. Whole